Capricorn, this is your April tarot reading coming from the mountains of Java. Now April is Ramadan, which means that I won't be doing any readings for during Ramadan. Uh, and so therefore this was recorded a couple of days before April. Um, and also if you look at my channel, there won't be as many things posted on the channel during this month of April. Overall, I really hope that you get something from this Capricorn. And if you do, if you could subscribe, hit the like button, pass a comment, because I need a little bit of help with these algorithms. Uh, but overall, Capricorn, I just want to say that I really hope that you get something useful from this reading. Really, I do. You may well be asking... Why from Java? What's important about tarot from Java? And the truth is, there is nothing so important about tarot from Java. Simply that here in Java, we have many different spirits who will come to help in, in your tarot reading. It'll probably put a different reflection on things. For example, the spirits here are less likely to be concerned about love and finances despite people in Java being every bit as interested in these things as the rest of us. But maybe the spirits are trying to tell us something else. Now I'll be using probably two decks, but out of three decks. So the first deck is Taro Nusantara. The second deck is the Steampunk deck. And the third deck is the Light Visions Tarot. Um, Taro Nusantara is actually a new one to me, which, which I love. Whereas the Light Visions, um, I've struggled with uh, as a result of the rendering. Um, although I, I think I'll grow into it, I, I will keep using it and coming back to it. You can see on all of them, I'm using quite a lot of uh, salt. And that's to clear the energy and the spirits from them. Something that I do fairly regularly with my Taro. And I also, you'll see a number of gym app there that I use um, just to bring a good energy to the tarot um, and to my reading. Perhaps the most important mystical object we use in Java is the Chris, the curly knife that you can see that I've placed across both decks. Chris are very important for bringing the spirits to work on any object here in Java. I call on the spirits of the mountain to assist me in shuffling these cards, in selecting the right cards and interpret them for Capricorn for April 2022. Hmm. Capricorn. I think I've got the measure of this spread, although, as always, these cards have a few tricks up up their sleeve for me. Um, uh, there is conflict. There's, there's no point in trying to tell you there isn't. There is definitely conflict and some darkness in this reading. Uh, but I think it's a case of all's, all's well that ends well. It's, it's almost talking about you learning a lesson, learning a lesson of life. If you look at that middle card, it's the hanged man. It means that you're waiting around for something to happen, just checking the environment before you act. Now, this could be self-imposed, or it could have been imposed upon you. At this stage, we don't know. Your recent past, we have the High Priestess um, in touch with your emotions. It could be you manifesting something, could be. Your current energy is the Seven of Wands. You're scoring some victories, but you're making some enemies. Future energy is the King of Wands. Powerful. Entrepreneurial. Is that the direction you're heading in? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe you are an entrepreneur, and that's where these enemies have come from. Um, the card impacting on the outcome is the death card an ending an abrupt ending 
the card which could change the outcome is the five of wands. Now that is a card of conflict, pulling in different directions. Uh, but the outcome is the Queen of Swords, a, a lovely queen, a queen that people admire, a queen that people come to for advice, a firm but fair queen, but a queen who sets boundaries. And I think that's the lesson that you're being taught during the month of April. So the energy of the hanged man appears in the centre. So it means that it impacts on everything else. So this is hanging around. Hanging around waiting for something to happen. Probably. Well, there you are. You're scanning the environment. You're looking at what's happening. You're taking it all in but you're not acting. Why is that? Well, we don't know. It could be enforced upon you. You could be feeling like me, that because of the restrictions, you know, I, I've been stuck on the island of Java now for two years. I, I, I desperately want a holiday in Bali, uh, and I'd like to see my 90-year-old 91 year old mother in the UK but you know if anything these things are looking further away than closer or maybe you've enforced this hanging around on yourself maybe you feel that the time isn't right to fully show your cards maybe you look at the card well he's hanging upside down there's nothing else he can do you know but he is he is looking at the environment isn't he he is looking at what's happening. And you get the impression that when he's cut down, he's ready to pounce. And now, your current energy is that of the High Priestess. Ah, yes. If you're hanging around, this is, this is somebody that not only is in control of her emotions, but can read the emotions of others, can read... Those things that are going on that maybe most of us miss. So if you're hanging around and just looking at things, looking at what's happening, then it seems to me the High Priestess would be a natural outcome to it. You look at the card, she's got her feet over a crescent moon, which suggests that she at least has some understanding of what to the rest of us is unknown. She does this through balancing both her logic, her brain and her intuition. So we've got a balance there of one white and one black column. She's got a book in her hand, so that's using her brain, but she's also got the wand in her hand, which is her using her intuition. Yeah, I think you're very intuitive. You're very intuitive because you've been waiting around, waiting around for something to happen. Sorry, I said this was your current energy. This was your past energy. Your past energy, very intuitive, yeah. Because your current energy, well, you are now clearly doing something. You're scoring some victories. Now, I say they're victories. It's, it's winning a battle, not a war. But you're clearly doing something. But in doing so, it puts you up on a pedestal. Maybe people are just jealous of what you're achieving or what you have achieved. Or maybe you've created some enemies along the way. And you look at the card, I think you're oblivious to the fact that you're creating enemies. All you're doing is you're focusing on the task. You're focusing on what you need to do, and in doing so, you're not spotting that some other people are not happy. Now, of course, if you were the high priestess, you would spot that. So is this saying that you've moved from this more intuitive, emotional person to one who's much more dedicated to action. It does feel that way. It does feel that way. It all ties in with the hanged man, but not very well now, does it? Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure now. What was looking like a very clear reading is becoming less so. 
happen from the Seven of Wands to the King of Wands in your future? Now, this has to be a good sign. This has to be positive. The King of Wands is an action-orientated king, a powerful king. Probably an entrepreneurial king. And now, <coughs> this reading doesn't necessarily mean you're in business. It could be a side hustle, or it could be just the way you conduct yourself in an entrepreneurial manner. But it does feel like you're in business, and you, you know, the last card you created some enemies. And this is you sort of rising to more of a leadership type of role. But very much action, very much action. You look at him, he's sitting on his throne in his finery. He's got his wand in his hand, but he's ready to leap into action. Bit like the hanged man, but the hanged man needs to be cut down first. It's as though, it's as though there's something constraining your action. I wonder what that could be. So now we have the death card. This is a card of endings. Probably bitter, abrupt endings. Hmm. Yeah. So something is coming to an end. Something's been brought to an end. Is that why you're hanging around? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. You look at the card. I mean, it looks dreadful. But then when you look over to the right, there's that man standing up to death, isn't it? He's standing up to it. Behind his head is a Hindu temple. So it's saying there is hope. From death comes renewal. From death comes renewal. Um, so, yeah, it's... It's not, not necessarily that bad a card. Not necessarily. But how does it fit in? How does it fit in? Now, we do know with the seven of wands that you've made enemies. Do they bring what feels like a business empire crashing down? I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The card that would impact negatively on the outcome. Sorry, I didn't say the death card. It impacts on the outcome. The card that would impact negatively on it is this five of wands, a card of conflict. It's a card of disagreement. But it's a disagreement largely because people either have a different vision or have a different view of how to get there. It's like it's not being communicated. You look at them, they're pulling in different ways. They're pulling in different ways. Hmm. So we've got the death card which would facilitate the outcome and the conflict which wouldn't. So do you spot something in this conflict that's important? The, the way to resolve this is clearly to create that vision. You know, you look at it, I mean, okay, they're in black and white implying Newcastle United, but it doesn't half feel like Manchester United. You know, everyone's, you know, they're all, well, most of them are quite good players, but they're just pull, pulling in different directions. There's no unity there. That's, that's what I get from this card. And now the outcome is the Queen of Swords. quite charismatic people come to her for advice people come to her to as an adjudicator almost because she has a reputation for being firm but fair she has a reputation for for yeah for for, for making judgments for making good judgments and she also sets boundaries. It feels like you've learnt a lesson from things coming to an end. That you need to put up boundaries. 
feels like that. You look at her, she's sitting in her throne. You wouldn't mess with her because she's got that sword up. And that's what boundaries are about. You don't even need to vocalise these boundaries because if you've got your sword up like that, you wouldn't mess with her. Despite her probably having a broad smile over her face. <laughs> yeah. Now we've, we've got to get clarity on this death card, haven't we? And what do we get? Well, first of all, we get the King of Pentacles. So I do get the impression that that this is about business or certainly something financial. We then have the Four of Cups. This is you. It's a bit like the hangman being stymied, a little bit depressed, look, trying to look at things. And then we have the Six of Cups. So something from the past. Something from the past. Let's look at each of those individually. Yeah, the first one is this King of Pentacles. He's very good with money, good with finances. Maybe you are an entrepreneur. You don't have to be, but it's certainly got something to do with money, this. It's got something to do with money. And of course, we had the Seven of Wands, you scoring some victories, but maybe making enemies along the way. Yeah, maybe making enemies along the way. I think whatever this business or financial thing that you're involved with, it comes to an end because that's what this Death Card is. There's an ending here. So there's an ending to something that you've been doing and maybe it comes about because you've made these enemies. Maybe it does. You look at him, I mean, he looks a nice chap, doesn't he? He's warmed himself in front of the fire. I remember as a child, you know, we used to wear woolen clothes, particularly in the winter. And if it was snowing or raining, you know, they'd get absolutely full of, well, they'd, they'd be sodden with water and we'd stand in front of a coal fire and the steam would come off our trousers. <laughs> <coughs> That's kind of what this card reminds me of. <laughs> and you see, we've got this four of cups. You're focusing on the immediate. You're focusing on things. Going over and over in your mind. You know that something's wrong, but I don't think you know exactly what it is. And you're focusing on that. And in doing so, you're not spotting other things. Maybe even a degree of despondency. Because remember, we've got this hanging around. Yes, yes, you're focusing. Maybe you're... Maybe you can feel, because remember you were the high priestess before, maybe you can feel there's something wrong. Don't quite know what it is and you're focusing on it and it's going round and round in your mind, but it's not doing you any good, you know. You look at the card, well he's got three cups of wine that looks like he's drinking and he's going through round and round in his mind, but if, if he looks up, there's a beautiful goblet of wine above his head. So it's almost as though, you know, if we're saying you're an entrepreneur, it's almost as though you've sort of so focused on these things that you, you don't see the new opportunities. Uh, but as someone pointed out to me, next to that goblet is that skull. So is it that you're not seeing what's going to bring down your business financial venture and as the next card's about to suggest maybe that's someone from the past and now we have the six of cups which is the past now of course this could be an ending of something from the past of somebody from the past or even a past love uh, but I don't think it is I don't think it is. I, what I think it is, is that this ending is related to the past. And I think it's related to that seven of wands. You created enemies in the past. And they bring down whatever you're doing. And you're probably not even aware of them. You're not aware of them. You're not aware of, of how you've hurt people. You might be. You might be, but 
I think you're not aware of them. And they might even be people that you have a degree of affection for. Because you look at the card, he's, he's, he's giving her those flowers, isn't he? So it might be someone close to you that is going to bring down your business or whatever this, this enterprise is. Yeah. Well, I think we can summarise, despite not having got all the answers. Mm. Capricorn, a very interesting reading, a very interesting reading. You're an intuitive person, in control of your emotions, but you don't necessarily see exactly what is happening. You just know that when things are wrong. And that's what this, this reading is all about. In fact, you're hanging around, you're hanging around waiting to act because you know something's wrong, but you don't quite know what it is. And it looks to be, I mean, you're not I'm not necessarily saying you're in business, but it, it's definitely about finances. And you're doing something quite well, but in doing so, you've made some enemies. You may not even be aware of how you've made the enemies, you're just aware that there's something wrong. And yeah, you, you, you are, you are a sort of a leader, you are this person that, that can create things. But I believe those enemies bring everything to an end. They bring everything to an end. And do they actually bring it to an end? Or is it your concern about what's going on that brings it to an end because of... You're so focused on there being something wrong, you don't actually see what it is that's wrong. Or maybe you don't seize the new opportunities. No, I, 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 I think they do bring an end to whatever it is. They do do it, yeah. But you don't see it. You don't see it. And maybe the reason you don't see it is there's somebody from your past, maybe even a past lover, but there's somebody from the past that you wouldn't expect to do this. Now, there is a chance that you'll see through it because of a conflict emerges with them. So if a conflict emerges with them, you may spot it in time. Uh, but I think it's unlikely. Now, I, I think the most likely outcome of this is that you realise that you've not set firm enough boundaries. You've allowed people from the past to get too close to what it is you're doing, how you make your money, and they've overstepped the mark, and you realise they have, and in future you need to set boundaries. So the reading really is about learning, as I thought it was. It's about you being a little bit stymied because of you, you really don't have the answers. You really don't see it coming, unfortunately. And then the realisation that maybe you'll never have all the answers, but if you have boundaries, maybe you could stop these things from happening in the future. You've enjoyed Tarot from Java as an addition to my channel the magic of java please take a look at the other the other uh, videos that i have on this channel about magic from java and i hope that you will be become a subscriber now if you want to find hear your next tarot reading hit the button and that will inform you of when i publish new um, new readings i'm certainly going to do a reading for every month but maybe I will try them a bit more frequently, say a mid-month reading, and maybe also some special readings. But above all, thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you, and enjoy Java.